loud stop floating into my lap. No longer to carry rain or a shower storm, but to add colors to my sunset sky. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, dignitaries, invited guests, teachers, and my dearest friends. Delhi Public School Tapi, with much pride and honor, presents its 11th school annual function. We express an awesome ambience in the presence of all gathered here. The flame of the lamp is a symbol of auspiciousness, prosperity, and abundance. Light brings knowledge and dispels the darkness of ignorance, bringing clarity and wholeness of vision. Every endeavor at DPS Tapi begins with our Vidya Deepam. Following DPS Tapi tradition, I would like to invite Mr. and Mrs. Mehta, grandparents of Ritika Mehta of Class 1A. Mrs. Mehta. Our principal, Dr. Sanjukta Sivakuma, is a person with a great vision. As a pioneer of this institution, her personal care, love, and concern have nurtured this school to reach to its greater heights. Now, I would like to request our principal, ma'am, Dr. Sanjukta Sivakumar, to say a few words. Good evening and welcome to our 11th annual function. This is always a very pleasurable day for all of us, isn't it? Are you all looking forward to it? Same here. In fact, it, the only difficult part of it is me having to come up and speak to you every year. But then again, I meet you like this very rarely. Our school is far away and parents find it difficult to bring their children all the way to school. Sometimes we do face incidents where they miss the bus in the morning and you're put to a great deal of trouble. So it's great to have you come like this and enjoy your children in their full bloom as they perform on the stage. It is very sad sometimes to see that in our, in our eagerness to do the best for our children, we sometimes end up putting too much pressure on them. We only talk to them about studies, we compare them with their friends, with their siblings, with others. And either we say you're doing well, you need to do better. Or we say you're not doing well enough, you still need to do better. The glass is always half empty. So these occasions actually balance things out. When you see them perform on stage, I'm sure you all feel, are we really qualified to judge them? Aren't they, when you see them perform, don't you feel they are much, much better than us? Yes or no? That's the point. At other times, we constantly urge them to do things, we constantly judge them, but actually they are the future, we are the past. Our job is to see that there are no obstacles on their path, and throughout their life, they perform with the same encouragement, they perform with the same enthusiasm, and we provide them the support, the encouragement, everything positive. It doesn't matter. Mistakes are part of life. You know, that is why we put up the pictures of children rehearsing. Because a lot of practice goes in before they can actually come up here. And we don't tell them, why are you making so many mistakes? We don't tell them that at all. Why? Because mistakes are a part of learning. And if we provide them with the positive inputs all the time, then definitely, when we next see them perform, whether on this stage or on the stage of life, I'm sure we are going to be very proud of them. So sit back and enjoy the function. Thank you again for coming. Thank you, ma'am, for your inspirational words. 
William Shakespeare is universally regarded as the greatest dramatist and the finest poet of English language. He lived in England during the reign of Queen Elizabeth I. Macbeth is regarded as one of the finest tragedies by William Shakespeare. So, he is presenting before you the tragedy of Macbeth by William Shakespeare. Delhi Public School Tapi presents before you the tragedy of Macbeth, a play about human ambition which leads a noble and a heroic warrior into ever deeper psychological pitfalls. Sit back and watch the play unfold the depths of the human mind. The tragedy of Macbeth is about soaring ambition, treachery, murder, guilt, and retribution. This play validates the power of human conscience and the triumph of justice over evil. Lord Macbeth is the thane of Gloms in Scotland and a loyal kinsman of the Scottish king, Duncan. Our play begins with Macbeth and his friend, Lord Banco, thane of Lochaber, returning from battle. They have defeated rebel soldiers in a hard-won fight, snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. This is wonderful news to please King Duncan, who will surely reward Lord Macbeth for his courage. All seems to be well. Wait. Is it? What terrible creatures have appeared? They look like witches. What evil omens? What are they croaking to one another? Let's hide, listen and watch. And why that will be hey, the set of sun? Where the place upon the heat there to meet with Macbeth? I come, Grimalkin. Bad of course, and I'm fair is foul and foul is Hover to the fog and fill the air. Thrice the brinded cat hath mewed. Thrice and once the hedge pig whine. It's time, it's time. Round about the cauldron go. In the poisoned entrails throw. Boil the fast in the charmed pot. Double, double, doil and trouble. Fire, burn and cauldron bubble. Fillet of a fenny snake. In the cauldron, boil and bake for the charm of 
powerful trouble like a hell broth boil and bubble double double toil and trouble fire burn and cauldron bubble scale of a dragon of a wolf make the cruel tigan slam double double toil and trouble fire burn and cold in bubble cool it with the baboon's blood then the charm is firm and good a drum a drum macbeth dot com the we are sisters hand in hand does to go about about tries to die and tries to mine and tries again to make up nine peace the charms wound up ah, by the pricking of my thumb something wicked this way comes so foul and fair a day i have not seen what are these so withered and so wild in their attire that look not like the inhabitants of the earth and yet around it live you or are you or that man may question speak if you can what are you all he Macbeth, hail to thee, pair of clumps. All hail, Macbeth, hail to thee, pair of cordar. All hail, Macbeth, thou shall be king hereafter. Good sir, why do you start and seem to fear things? That do sound so fair. In the name of truth, are you fantastical, my noble partner? You greet with great prediction and royal hope. To me, you speak not. If you can look into the seeds of time, speak then to me. Hail! 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 Not so happy, yet much happier. Thou shalt get kings, though thou be none. So all hail, Macbeth and Banquo, Banquo and Macbeth, all hail. Stay. Tell me more. I am the thane of Gloms, but how of Cawdor? The thane of Cawdor lives, and to be king stands not within the prospect of belief. Say, from whence you owe this strange intelligence, or why would you stop our way? in such prophetic greeting speak i charge you without the vanished into the air melted would they had stayed have we eaten on the insane route 
your children shall be kings you shall be king and thane of god or two went it not so to the self same tune and words who's here the king had happily received macbeth the news of thy success we are sent to give thee from our royal master thanks and to herald thee into his sight and for greater honor he bade me call thee then of cordor hail most worthy then what can the devil speak true the then of cordor lives so why do you dress me in such borrowed robes who was the then lives yet but under heavy judgment treasons confessed and proved have overthrown him gloms and chain of cordor the greatest is behind thanks for your pains do you not hope your children shall be kings often times to win us to our harm the instruments of darkness tell us truth i thank you gentlemen let us towards the king come friends the witches have prophesied that macbeth shall become the thane of cordor and the king of scotland the thane of cordor was executed for rebelling against king duncan the king made lord macbeth the new thane of cordor to reward his loyalty and bravery but how can macbeth become king when king duncan still rules scotland duncan has proclaimed his eldest son crown prince malcolm heir to scotland's throne malcolm's younger brother prince john albain is also living then how can the with second prophecy come true how can macbeth become the next king of scotland i began to fear for duncan and the princess king duncan his sons and the courtiers are about to visit macbeth at his castle at inverness they will be his guests for one night what an honor for lord and lady macbeth royal guest under their roof the guest is always sacred and the king as guest is doubly sacred will macbeth the loyal subject and relative of the king remember this the raven himself his horse that croaks the fatal entrance of duncan under my battlements come you murdering ministers and fill me with direst cruelty come sick night in the smoke of hell that my keen night see not the wound it makes no heaven peep to the blankets of the dark to cry hold hold my dearest love the king duncan comes here tonight great gloms wadi kodo greater than both hail hereafter gloms thou art 
and kodo and shalt be what thou art promised yet do i fear thy nature is it too full of the milk of human kindness to catch the nearest way thou would speak great art not without ambition but would not play false and when goes duncan hence tomorrow as he purposes oh never shall sun that morrow see my rain bear welcome in your eye look like the innocent flower but be the serpent under it he that's coming must be provided for this night's business shall to all our days to come give sovereigns away and master them we will speak further This castle hath a pleasant seat. I have observed the air is delicate. See, see, our honoured hostess, fair and noble hostess, we are your guest tonight. All our service for poor to contend against those honours deep, wherewith. Your Majesty loads our house. Where's the Thain of Cawdor? We love him highly, and shall continue our graces towards him. Give me your hand, by your leave, hostess. <laughs> If it were done, when it is done, then it were well. It were done quickly. If the assassination could trammel up the consequence, that but this blow might be the be all at the end all here. but in these cases we still have judgment here which returns to plague the inventor he is here in double trust first as i am his kinsman and his subject wrong both against the deed then as his host who should against his murderer shut the door not bear the knife myself besides this Duncan had borne his faculties so meek, had been so clear in his great office that his virtues 
will plead like angels and pity like a naked newborn babe shall blow the horrid deed in every eye we will proceed no further in this business what's the hope drunk wherein you dress yourself hath it slept since wouldst thou live a coward in thine own esteem priti peace i dare to all that may become a man who dares do more is none when you dust do it then you were a man if we should fail we fail but screw your courage to the sticking place and we'll not fail when duncan is asleep his two chamberlains will i with wine so for sale that in swine sleep they lie as in a death find not his officers who shall bear the guilt when we have marked with blood thou sleepy too and use their very daggers it will be received that they have done it who dares receive it other as we shall make a clamor roar upon his death i am settled and bend up to this terrible feat false face must hide what false heart doth know it is one thing to plan but an entirely different experience to put your plan into action will make bed betray his king his guest and thus break both his sworn oath of loyalty to his king and the time honored traditions of hospitality <laughs> what a terrible thought this a dagger which i see before me come let me clutch thee and such an instrument i was to use Whilst I threat, he lives. I go, and it is done. The bell invites me. Hear it not, Duncan, for it is a knell that summons thee. to heaven or to hell that which hath made them drunk hath made me bold hark peace it was the owl that shrieked the doors are open and the surfeited grooms do mock their charge with snores i have drugged their possets had he not resembled my father as he slept i had done it who's there 
What? Oh! My husband! I have done the deed. Didst thou not hear a noise? I heard the owl shriek. Did not you speak? When? Now. As I descended? I. This is a sorry sight. A foolish thought to say a sorry sight. We thought I heard a voice cry. Sleep no more. Macbeth does murder sleep. Glomis hath murdered sleep. Therefore, Cordor shall sleep no more. Macbeth shall sleep no more. Consider it not so deeply. These deeds must not be thought so. It will make us mad. Go, get some water, and wash this filthy witness from your hand. What hands are here? Ah! They pluck out my eyes. Will all great Neptune's ocean wash this blood clean from my hand? No! This my hand will rather the seas make red. Wake, Duncan, with thy knocking, I would thou couldst. I pray you, remember the porter? Was it so late, friend? Uh, you went to bed? That you do lie so late? Faith, sir, we were carousing till the second cock. Is thy master stirring? Our knocking has awaked him. Here he comes. Good morrow, noble sir. Good morrow, both. Is the king stirring? Worthy thin? Not yet. He did command me to call timely on him. I have almost slipped the hour. I'll bring you to him. This is the door. I'll make so bold to call. For it is my limited service. Curse the king hence today. He does. He did appoint so. 
the night has been unruly. Where we lay, our chimneys were blown down. And as they say, strange screams of death heard in the air. Some say the earth was feverous and did shake. It was a rough night. My remembrance cannot parallel a fellow to it. Oh, horror! 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 Tongue, nor heart, cannot conceive, nor name thee. What's, What's the, the matter? matter? Most sacrilegious murder hath broke up the Lord's anointed temple and stole thence the life of the building. What is it you say? The life? Me and you, His Majesty. Approach the chamber. Do not bid me speak. First see, then speak yourselves. Awake! Awake! Ring the alarm bell! Murder and treason. Banco and Donalby. Malcolm awake. Look on death itself. Up. Up and see countenances horror. Ring the bell! What's the business that calls to parley the sleepers of the house? Speak! Speak! Oh, gentle lady, it is not for you to hear what I can speak. Oh, Banco, Banco, our royal master's murdered. Whoa, alas, what? In our house? Too cruel anywhere. Dear Duff, I prithee, contradict thyself. Say, it is not so. And Grace is dead. What is amiss? The spring, the head, the fountain of your blood is stopped. Your royal father's murdered. Who? Oh, by whom? Those of his chambers, as it seemed, had done it. Their hands and faces were embarrassed with blood. So were their daggers, which unwiped, we found upon their pillows. They stared and were distracted. No man's life was to be trusted with them. Oh, yet I do repent me of my fury that I did kill them. Whoever did you so? Who can be temperate and furious, loyal and neutral? In a moment, no man, my violent love, outran the pauser. Reason! Help me hence, oh! Look to the lady! Look to the lady! Why do we hold our tongues? Fears and scruples shake us. 
Here, our fate may rush in and seize us. Let's away. Our tears are not yet brewed. And when we have our naked frailties hit, let us meet and question this most bloody piece of work. To know it further and fight against treasonous malice. In the great hand of God, I stand. And so do I. What will you do? I'll to England. To Ireland. I. Our separated fortunes shall keep us both the safer. Where we are, there's daggers in men's smile. The near in blood, the near are bloody. Therefore, to horse, let us not be dainty of leave taking, but shift away when there's no mercy left. has murdered his king and worse. Now, Malcolm and Donald Bain suspecting Macbeth of their father's murder and his intentions towards them will flee to England. Everyone suspects Macbeth, but they are afraid to speak out, and rightly so. For he who has killed once will kill again and yet again to silence his enemies one by one. the world, sir, now? Why? See you not? Is it known who did this more than bloody deed? Those that Macbeth had slain? Alas, the day. What good could they pretend? They were summoned, Malcolm and Donald Bain, the king's two sons who are stolen away and fled, which puts upon them the suspicion of the deed. Against nature still? Then it's most like the sovereignty will fall upon Macbeth. He is already named and gone to scorn to be invested. Will you to scorn? No, cousin. I'll to five. Farewell. I'll to scorn. God's benison go with you and with those that would bring good of bad and friends of foes. There is blood on thy face. It's Banco's then. Is he dispatched? My lord, his throat is cut that I did for him. Thou art the best of the cut throats. Most royal sir, Fleance Banco's son has escaped. Then comes my feet again. I had a Perfect! Now I am bound in doubt and fear. But Banco safe? Banco safe in a ditch with twenty gashes on his head. Thanks for that.
Get thee gone. I hear Mad Dog lives in England. So, can you tell where he bestows himself? The son of Duncan lives in English court. Mad Duff has gone to pray the English king upon his aid, by his help, and with him above, prepare for war with Macbeth. Some holy angel in the court of England may grant a swift blessing to this, our suffering country, under a hand accursed. Add my prayers to yours. Murder and tyranny cannot go unchecked. Macbeth thinks he has killed all his enemies, and those remaining have fled to England. But in England, Malcolm is supported by the English king's army. He plans to invade Scotland and take back his rightful throne. Macbeth, be warned. Justice will triumph in the end. Even Lady Macbeth, who wanted to be queen, how long will she wear the diadem tainted with innocent blood? Her conscience is sick. Macbeth is treacherous. A tyrant. So lame blisters our tongues. Bleed. Lead poor Scotland under great tyranny. Wear thou thy wrongs. I think our country sinks beneath the oak. It weeps, it bleeds. And each new day a gash is added to her wounds. And here, from gracious England, have I offer of goodly thousands. There would be hands uplifted in my right when I shall tread upon the tyrant's head or wear it on my sword. My poor country shall be redeemed. Oh, Scotland, Scotland. England, with 10,000 warlike men, already at a point, was setting forth. Now we'll together, and the chance of goodness, be like our warranted quarrel. See, who comes here? My ever gentle cousin, welcome to England. My countrymen, stand Scotland where it did. Alas, poor country. It cannot be called our mother, but our grave, where nothing is once seen to smile. What's the newest grief? How does my wife? And all my children, the tyrant does not batter at their peace. For that, I saw the tyrant's power of foot. Your castle is surprised. Wife, babes, savagely slaughtered. Merciful heaven. My children too. Wife, children. Servants, how oh, that could be found? Be comforted. Let's make us medicines of our great revenge to cure this 
deadly grief. Dispute this like a man. I shall do so. Heaven, raise them now. Be this the vex stone of your sword. Let grief convert to anger, and then raise the heart. Bring the this fiend of Scotland and myself within my sword's length. Set him, and if he escape, heaven forgive him too. This tune goes manly. Come, go we to the king. Our power is ready. Our leg is nothing but our leaf. Macbeth is ripe for shaking. Night is long that never finds the day. When was it she last walked? Since His Majesty went into the field, I have seen her rise from her bed, throw her nightgown upon her, unlock her closet, and walk forth, and again return to bed. Yet all this while, in most fast sleep, a great perturbation in nature, to receive at once the benefit of sleep and do the effects of watching. very guys and upon my life fast asleep observe her stand close you see her eyes are open I but their sense is shut what what is it she does now Look how she rubs her hands. It is an accustomed action with her to seem thus washing her hands. I have known her continue in this for quarter of an hour. Yet here's a spot. Ha! Huh? She speaks out. Damned spot. Out, I say. One, two. Why then? Tis time to do it. Hell is murky. Fie, my lord, fie! A soldier and a fear. What need we fear? When none can call a bar to account. And yet, who would have thought the old man to have had so much blood in him? Do you, ma? That? What? Will these hands never be clean? Here's the smell of blood still. All the perfumes of Arabia will not sweeten this little hand. Oh! 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 Well, well, well. What a sigh is there. The heart is solely charged. This disease is beyond my practice. To bed, to bed. There's knocking at the gate. Come, come, come. Give me your hand. 
what's done cannot be undone. To bed, to bed. Will she go now to bed? Directly. Our natural deeds do breed unnatural troubles. More needs she, the divine, than the physician. God, God forgive us all. Look after her. So good night. I think, but dare not speak. Good night, good doctor. Me no more reports. There is ten thousand soldiers, sir. The English force. So please you take thy face hence. Doctor, I am sick at heart. I have lived long enough as honor, love, obedience, friends. I must not look to have, but in their stead. Curse is deep. I'll fight till from my bones my flesh be hacked. Give me my armor. I will not be afraid of death <laughs> and pain. <laughs> Wherefore was that cry? The queen, my lord, is dead. She should have died hereafter. Tomorrow. And tomorrow. And tomorrow, creeps in this petty pace from day to day to the last syllable of recorded time, and all our yesterdays have lighted fools. The way to dusty death. Out, out, brief candle. Life's but a poor player that struts and frets. His are upon the stage. And then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury. Signify nothing. Battle that follows, England defeats Scotland. Macbeth had earlier slaughtered in cold blood. The innocent wife 
and children of Macduff. Now, Macduff challenges Macbeth to a single combat. Macbeth is defeated and killed. So, in the end, he was alone, surrounded by his enemies. Malcolm wins back his rightful crown and throne. Justice and right triumph over ambition and treachery. For so the heart, behold where he lies, the cursed usurper, and the time is free. Hail, King of Scotland! Kings and kinsmen, henceforth be ours the first that ever Scotland in such an honor named. What's more to do as calling home our exiled friends abroad that fled the snares of watchful tyranny of this dead butcher? and his fiend like queen. By the grace of grace, we will perform in time and place. So thanks to all at once and to each one whom we invite to see us crowned at school. 